Inhale. Exhale. One or two hands on the heart space. We arrive more and more and more and more and more into this moment to bring a presence to one another and to all parts of us with five mindful breaths. Mm. Breathe in, breathe out, blink your eyes, and mobilize <laughs> intuitive movement. Wherever you are, your kitchen, your bathroom, the office space, still in bed, what does the body want to do? <clears throat> Can you reach into those stiff spots, the pleasurable spots? Greetings, hello, welcome to this moment in time. Cheers. Hello, Joe, David, Lauren, Akash. Oh my gosh, hold on, I'm about to trip out because I think that name was called Akash, that song. Okay, you're not going to believe this. Akash, the name of the song is called Akash. I'm not kidding, look it up later. Oh, I always say there's a bit of magic that happens on and when we gather. And I don't mean to dwell on this before I introduce myself and what we're doing. But Akash commented, this is a beautiful track. It's because it speaks to your soul. Everyone, look it up later. It's called, it's spelled a bit different. Yes, Akash. I'm like yelling because I'm excited. Started all calm, but... Okay, it's called Akash, spelled a little bit different. Okay, I'm getting too excited. It's called Akasha, but it's in the same world. And it's by Goa Ubhar. Look it up later, write it down. Maybe you're meant to listen to it and you'll have some sort of ooh. So yes, I know it's all in the details and the song is felt a bit different, but it's close enough for me to have a little freak out. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Robert Halley. And I am based in Unionville. It's north of Toronto. Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and the Huron-Wendat people's traditional territory. My number for my knowing and living my truth is probably a 6.5. I feel like there's so much more to embody. My word is hmm, trans iridescent caves. I see, I feel, but I also like to be cozy and digested and glow in my own way. <laughs> oh, I'm a creative wellness coach. I blend my 20 years in the performing arts with holistic wellness that I'm certified in, yoga, coaching, mindfulness, but also things I've studied along the way. Welcome family members. Welcome new friends. This is Tuesday's Talk Towards Truth. What is the truth? we get to decide. There's universal truths, but there's truths that awaken to us in our incarnated life in this moment, in 10 years from now, when you hit rock bottom, when you rise up, 
who knows? When Akash listens to the song, it was like, I like that song. And then it was the name of the song. Truth awakens every moment in time. And maybe some of that will be awakened today. This is a shorter session. I have a full day, but also I'm doing more insight time or lives. So to make that happen, do shorter ones, longer ones. So I'm not reading your arrival, but I see you, Joe, David, Laura, Nakasha, Ellen, Salini, Shelly. Hello. <laughs> awesome. So the structure is we're going to read a story. Then we're going to reflect together. Then we're going to discuss some quotes. And then there's some journal questions. So this is very condensed. It's organized around a theme by whoever is going to pick that topic. I will call on someone very shortly. <sighs> but let's... Uh... <laughs> oh, thanks, Ellen. Yeah, I, I have curly hair, but you know, thinning and shh like that, the aging process. And I don't really care, but I work in the film industry. So sometimes to pass as a certain character, you got to clean up. And I was a lawyer yesterday. Plus, it's good to release and grow into the newness. Cheers to that. Um, let's breathe and expand in all directions and get to this inner outer work together. Feel free to guide energy in and out. Let's go. Breathe in, breathe out. Who hasn't been here before? You have 10 seconds to reveal yourself. Everyone's been here before or knows this character. Great, then the sixth person that puts an emoji in the chat you will pick our theme, our story today. Sixth person, offer an emoji. I know there's not a lot of us here today, but quality over quantity always. And if no one's going, then we'll just pick the numerology of the day. Actually, let's make it easier. One, two, three, four, five. Um, I'm looking for a number between one to five. And the sixth person, we're going to pick that one. Thank you. 
All right, Kitty, you're the one. Thank you. So, Kitty, give me a number between Kitty, please give me a number between one and 13. I have my own process. <laughs> Kitty wants three, three to three, three, three. The sacred trinity, does that even rhyme? Three, 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 three. The sacred trinity, it does, great. I'm not losing it. I already lost it a long time ago, but why don't we all lose it? Because when you unpack, you get to repack more mindfully and more relevant to these times and to you. Okay, let's go. I just have to make a note so we don't read the same story twice. Voila. Please have your journals nearby the whole time you can ponder or you can uh, just close your eyes for the story. Let's read this story. And then please use the chat to reflect together. And we'll go from there. Hello, everyone. I welcome you to this moment in time with a story followed by some quotes and questions. Maybe you have a journal nearby to have your own process and to reflect on what is true for you. Themes are introduced in media, in songs, in stories, in films. But at the end of the day, how does it wash through you for you to feel empowered in living your truth, knowing your values? Let's have an experience together. Find comfort in the body temple. Move and groove intuitively. Settle and be. Beautiful breath in. Beautiful breath out, deepen your breath, activate rest and digest, and hear these words. A number of students, oops, pardon me. A man approached his rabbi one day and said, Rabbi, I am desperate. I need your help. Happiness seems to have disappeared from our home. My wife, our five children, my mother-in-law and I, we all live together in one single room. We are constantly shouting at each other and we have reached the end of our rope. It's actually a living nightmare. Do you promise to do everything I tell you? Asked the rabbi in reply. And the man swore he would do anything he could bring back joy, if he could bring back this, this joy to his home. Excellent, said the rabbi. Um, how many animals do you have at home? Oh, uh, we have a cow, a goat, and... We have six chickens too, said the man. Okay, well, round up all your animals and bring them into the room with you, said the rabbi, and then come back to see me in one week's time. 
The man went back home and did, as the rabbi said. A week later, he returned to the rabbi even more depressed than before. I'm having a nervous breakdown. <sighs> he wailed at the rabbi. The mud, the dirt, the noise, it's, it, it's all driving us crazy. <sighs> okay, uh, return home and remove the animals from your home and house again, advised the rabbi. So the man hurried home and he did as the rabbi instructed. <laughs> The next day, he returned to the rabbi's house, his eyes shining with joy. <gasps> Life is wonderful, he shouted to the rabbi. <laughs> the animals are, out are outside and the house is a paradise. It's so quiet and clean and spacious. We are happy. This is a Hasidic story. Breathe in. Breathe out. In the following moments of silence, what do you remember from the story? What's real, true, and sparks relevance for you? Well, 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 a short reflective story. Hmm, what stands out for you? For me, perspective, gratitude. You know, we, we are where we are and can it be enough? Can you be grateful for what you have? We all know comparison is, it can be referred to as the devil, right? If you compare to my life, where I live, how much money I make, what I have, what my body looks like, what my peace looks like, what my family looks like, what does comparing do other than make you feel that you don't have what someone else has? So this story explored a living nightmare Perhaps if you're someone that's highly sensitive and needs a lot of quiet to be around a lot of different personalities, different needs, uh, uh, talking over each other, who knows what the story is, being in close proximity. But sometimes you don't have a choice, certain circumstances. Personally, I, for me to live my dreams, dancing at Alvin Ailey in New York City, you have to prove 40 to 50,000 a year in a checking account. So they know you won't work illegal. I didn't have that, nor family, but I did have some family in Brooklyn and I had to sleep three to a room, a tiny, tiny room. It was challenging. However, the perspective of what it was able to gift me with, the story talked about Maybe they didn't have a choice to expand in their home. So the rabbi advised, do you have animals? Go live with them. Of course, maybe they love their animals, but animals needs and smells and sounds are different to human needs and smells and sounds. So having that perspective of living with the beasts and the different challenges that provided, take them out. Boom, perspective, use it or lose it. That's one of the quotes. <laughs> perspective, use it or lose it. We all are on our different paths in earth school. What's the point of comparing and this and that? 
You are where you are. I say this all the time. You are where you are and it has to be enough. If it's not enough, then you're going to fight and wish you were here and there and everywhere. Deal with the drama and trauma now to birth your beautiful plant, flowers of tomorrow. If people don't understand that or get that, they're not of harmonious matches to support you at this time. So that's what I got from that. Be grateful for where you are in an attitude of gratitude and the raw harshness of reality when you look at your life. There is momentum and there's perspective to grow. When you're constantly fighting, that's not a vibrational match to grow, expand, change, or to law of attract to next versions and cycles of you. Can you make peace with where you are? No matter what, the onlookers, everyone's gonna have an opinion, right? But they're not you. Even if you explain it to your therapist, to your group circle, everyone's gonna have an opinion. You need to have your opinion with where you are and to make peace with you and your creator and your spirit. It may look ugly, but it's, it's where you are. Yeah. We tend to undervalue the importance of what we have. It's true. When you think about it, like we're not carrying, I think it's Dr. Andrew Wilde, he used to say, you're not carrying a trailer where you're going. When we leave the body temple, we're taking none of it with us. We're taking the memories, the soul karmic learnings. Of course, it's nice to have nice things, but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is your alignment, your joy, your harmony, your peace. We will have those moments of contrast, pain, but let's not make that a career. Yeah, beautiful. So may you take your perspective with you where you are and what you have and grow and glow from there. Breathe some of these themes in. Let it go. We move on to some quotes. I will say it the first time for you to hear it. The second time, let it go a bit deeper to know if you like it. How does it make you think? And if we have any thoughts about it. Happiness doesn't mean everything has to be perfect. It means you have to decide to see beyond. Second time. Happiness doesn't mean everything has to be perfect. It means you have to decide to see beyond. Mm, I love it. So that's from an unknown source. Thank you, Kitty, for your donation. I love that you picked this theme, which by the way, I usually reveal it at the end. It's, it's about joy, joy and happiness. So look what you're calling in, Kitty. <laughs> I love that. That quote supports the story. Happiness doesn't mean everything has to be perfect. It's okay if you have a little bit of clutter, if the, if the family's here, they have to stay for another month. <laughs> You know, things don't have to be perfect. What is perfection? Can we be perfectly imperfect? It means see beyond what's important. Okay, it's important that your belly is full. Well, you know that you have some nourishment, that you got some sleep, you get some fresh air, move the body temple. You feel that you offer service to your soul or to the world. That's what's important. Of course, it's important to have a clean space where there's flow, but 
things happen, life happens, challenges happens, emergency happens. Can you see beyond the clutter, the contrast? That's what's asked of you, okay? And to remind people of that. Our next quote, let's take a breath between, because this is all rich nourishment. There is nothing more liberating than joy. It frees your mind and it puts it at ease. There is nothing more liberating than joy. It frees your mind and it puts it at ease. Mm. Joy, 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 <laughs> liberation, freedom, ease. Do you hear these buzzwords? Oh, bathe in them. Liberation, joy, free, ease. Oh, let's bathe in those words. Beautiful. So joy, joy is self-cultivated. What sparks joy? We've heard that word before. Happiness is fleeting. Joy is real. No one can take that away from you. Can you identify what sparks joy in your life? How can you have those sparks a little more often? There's the Marie Kondo method. What sparks joy? Throw all the sweaters on the floor, all your shoes, all the books. Which one sparks joy? Which ones of which song sparks joy? Which teacher leader sparks joy? Hopefully I spark some joy for you. And you can spark some joy for me. That last quote was from Rabbi Nahaman of Braselv. Our next quote is, when one door of happiness closes, another opens. But often we took so long at the closed door that we do not see the one which is open for us. When one door of happiness closes, another opens. But often we look so long at that closed door that we do not see the one that is open for us. That's a quote from Helen Keller. How does that impact you? Reflect on where you're at in your life right now. Is there something that used to cause happiness, spark happiness for you? And is that cycle over, which it often is, a relationship, a job, the summer season? Your favorite cereal or chocolate that you can't buy anymore, they don't import it. Whatever that happiness was, it is over. As someone that has lived around the world, certain things you get accustomed to, it's over. But where is the opportunity for new sparks of joy and happiness? Are you blind to it? Please be gentle with yourself. This is why we journal, go for walks, spend some time alone. The universe is always talking to you. There is an opportunity right in front of your footsteps today. What is the opportunity today for a little more happiness to creep in? Ask yourself, what is my opportunity of happiness today? Where is happiness hiding? Remember, it doesn't have to be profound. It could be, oh, I bought those prunes. <laughs> Does happiness and prunes equal? They might. <laughs> I can put some nut butter in them. Oh, maybe that's uh, 
little sweet treat since I ran out of the ice cream or the candy or the licorice? Is there happiness in walking a different route to smell some bread from the bakery, even if you're not going to eat it? Who knows where your happiness is hiding? But shift your eyes. There's another door available for you. Our final quote, focus on the journey, not the destination. Joy is found not in finishing an activity, but in doing it. Focus on the journey, not the destination. Joy is found not in finishing an activity, but in doing it, says Greg Anderson. The journey, we are blessed to have long journeys, soul journeys, human journeys. Some of our body temple journeys are shorter than others. It's nice to have goals. A lot of entrepreneurs, they tell you, or your soul purpose service, if that's awakened to you, have a goal, have a journey, have a dream so big that you may not even attain it in your lifetime. Just get it going. Of course, as someone that has a lot of goals and dreams, I want to make like 10 card games. This costs money and process and feedback. Lord knows I have depression creep in. There's so many things I want to be doing. Sometimes it takes time. Of course, it's nice to attain things. And you will, and you can. But can we be so present, so aligned with our values and what sparks joy that even if we don't get there, we can enjoy the process? Now that is some spiritual work to show up day in and day out and carve away at the sculpture of your soul's desires. That's one to take with you in meditation and a reminder, can I be present with my senses and be in this moment, laugh along the way. Can we laugh and play as much as we cry and have angst? We can, but it takes discipline and presence. We close with three questions. Feel free to use the chat. Or you can journal with them in this moment. It's also interesting to answer the questions like a Miss America answer. You just say what comes out, when it comes out, and you don't do a whole page journal. But by all means, you can use these questions to journal longer. On what and whom does my happiness depend? On what and whom does my happiness depend? What's your answer? Think about it, write about it, acknowledge it, share it.
Breathe in. Breathe out. No one wants to disclose. What does your happiness depend on? When you acknowledge it, there's healing to that. And it can be very superficial, right? There's healing in that. So my happiness depends on sleeping properly, um, having quiet time every day alone. Mm, Sometimes it depends on having some chocolate or some coconut-based frozen delights. My happiness depends on, am I working on my dreams? Am I doing something to advance my wellness offerings and my soul service? How about you? Does your happiness depend on someone else? If they give you quality time? It's good to be aware of it, right? Why are we even here? Everything is a journey of awareness. The self-help industry, the self-development industry, reading books, art. It's to enjoy the splendor of living, but awareness. Are you aware of your source of happiness? Is it sustainable? Do you need to wake up out of the illusion and bubble? My daily choices is shared. That makes sense, just in general. Your choices. Do you have the ability to choose? If not, find a way. Move, leave, cultivate, create. Yeah, your choices, definitely. When you can work on your inner peace and not rely on the external sources. Same with me. Look what I mentioned. Chocolate, ice cream, personal time. It's always worth taking that journey within cultivating the inner space. Wake up earlier, set an alarm, like hide in your car, do something, cultivate the inner sanctuary. Breathe in, breathe out. Second question, what do we have to let go of in order to be happier? What do we have to let go of in order to be happier? Say that to yourself, what comes to mind? What do you have to let go of to be happier, more joyous? If you don't connect with happy, joy, to let joy in. Journal, what's the impulse? course, you can take more time with these questions. So personally, I need to let go of (laughs) thinking I can influence people's moods. Some people have chosen to be angry. Some people have chosen to be in a victim state. And they don't want to 
hear of other possibilities. They don't want to know there's another power that is able to be birthed in them that's more holistic. I have to let go of wanting, expecting that I can be a force of change in people's challenging moods and behaviors. I also need to let go of uh, certain high standard expectations that are unrealistic. If it's only me doing something or, you know, if you need like a couple tens of thousands of dollars and it's just, it may not meet the timeline. So letting go of that doesn't mean giving up, just letting go of the finite exactness is, is what I need to let go of to be happier and, and to enjoy the process. Urgh. I say it like that because it's challenging. I want what I want when I want it. <sighs> let go of the voices, the shoulds, the shouldn'ts, the, spo the supposed tos of other people. Oh, those shoulds are so annoying. We all need to learn the pillars of nonviolent communication. You have a desire and need, I have a desire and need. They may not always match and mesh. So if we're choosing to respect, support, and love one another, request, not should. They should be doing that. Well, if you, you should do this. I should do this. Request. Would you be willing? Would you be willing to hose down the patio when you garden and so I can do yoga on it? <laughs> Whatever it is. Would you be willing? Teach people. Hey, we're sharing a life or home or, you know, we, we work every day together. Would you be willing to? Would you be willing to? Letting go of expectations and attachments. <laughs> Breathe in. Breathe out. Our final question to close this session. Very simple. Profound. What makes me happy? What makes me happy? What makes me happy? Say it. What pops up? You could do a rampage. What are the buzzwords? What makes me happy? Say it, testify it, what makes me happy? Call it in whether you've experienced it recently or not. Mm. Write it down, share it. Activated in the vortex around and within you.
being in community with like-minded individuals, especially when singing, sharing music and dancing together makes me happy. Mm. Sometimes I like to put my fingers up and just list them. This is something good in a car, road trips. Remember in the morning when you wake up, what sparks joy? What makes me happy? Okay, hold the vision. Can you find, manifest, align with at least three of those? I'm gonna do 10 right now. Having talking circles, mindfulness circles with other diverse people. Contemporary art makes me happy. The strangeness, the reflectiveness. Dancing makes me happy. Dark, sustainable chocolate that doesn't include child labor makes me happy. Fresh vegetables, salad mm, that nourishes and delights with texture makes me happy. Exploring caves <laughs> makes me happy. Being in a hammock makes me happy. Being slow with another in an intimate way makes me happy. Exploring tantric sensuality and, and prompts. To lose time, to alchemize time makes me happy. Seeing animals free in their natural habitat makes me happy. And seeing grown men, kind, tender, empathetic, and compassionate, melting toxic masculinity away makes me happy. What makes you happy? Inhale deeply. Exhale completely. We explore joy and happiness through a story, some quotes, some questions. What truths were revealed to you? Even if it's one new thought, one new idea. Identify, know thyself and cultivate and design your life. The power is within you, around you. May you live your truth bit by bit by bit and build the castle of consciousness in a journey of eternal awareness, joy, and bliss. There is great love here for you. And for now, feel the completion and stay in the process of life, of knowing thyself, the many different faces, places, and souls that is you again and again and again. Thank you, my Insight Timer family, my Withyin family. So Withyin is my uh, my wellness startup company with lots of creative holistic wellness solutions, card games, yoga, mindfulness meditations, peer support coaching. If you like what we do on Insight Timer, everything can be a one-to-one or a group. So you can learn more about that. Check that out. Thank you for your presence. 
your support. Again, I'm Robert Howey, creative wellness coach based in Toronto, Canada. Thank you for your donations, those that were able to. And know that we do have a circle. It's called The Journey With Yen. It's on Insight Timer. If you want to chat in like-minded creative community, you never know how we can be a match. So find The Journey With Yen or look Robert Halley up. If we're not connected, bottom right corner, I'd be honored to be one of your teachers, your guides, your siblings in the soul family. When I become a teacher, you can direct message me here or robert at withian.ca. Other than that, please have a listen to some of my talks, my meditations. If you can offer a review, that will help me a lot in designing courses one day. Other than that, this was Tuesday's Talk Towards Truth. It appears on a Tuesday. So when you are connected with me, you can get the notifications when events pop up. Mm. Other than that, who's in New York or the surrounding areas? I'm in New York, November 2nd to 9th, 2022 for a weekend wellness retreat and some talks, uh, mindfulness hikes in Central Park. Make yourself known if you'd love to be in each other's auras. If you're comfortable and embrace I'm also a fan of a handshake, the artistry. I don't crush hands, I transmit energy to eye gaze. So those of you in New York, holla holla. <laughs> Other than that, thank you, thank you, thank you. We may have a live tomorrow. I'm on standby for some other employment. But yeah, there's lots happening. I'm here to serve, we're here to celebrate and rise up. Rise like a flame, let's rise up. I should probably learn these lyrics to not hurt your ears. Cheers. Love you. Boop, boop, be doo Mwah. Ciao bello bellissimo